So kind of coming back though, like at what point does withholding something become dishonesty? Because, you know, like there are times we talked about earlier where you feel like I'm going through something. I'm like, you know, there have been a couple of times, more than a couple, where we've had a blow up or a challenge. And I think like, oh, I don't know if this thing's going to work out. I don't know if I'll be able to do this for the rest of my really? life. Really? It's true. Like I've had that where, you know, and see, look, and I didn't tell you about it. Now, was that withholding? <laughs> or No, I did tell you about it. I have told you about that. Right? I'm like, and I, I don't do it as much anymore, but early on when we had a big thing, I'm like, oh my God, it's not going to work. And pretty much that doesn't happen nearly as often when we have like a bigger blowout. I'm like, okay, yeah, we're just going to get through this like everything. But even in the last couple of weeks, there was this moment of just like, oh my God, can we do this? But now, of course, I don't share that. Yeah. But I don't know if that's withholding or if that's just me saying like, that's just a part of, I can just tell you. I do that sometimes, you know? And then at what point does that, you know, does that withholding become lying? I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. At what point? Maybe when you know, like for certain, like it's not coming from anger or like reaction that I don't want to do this anymore. Like, you know, when you don't like... I complain about like my business. I don't want to do this anymore. It's too hard, but I know I'm not quitting. But maybe if I knew for sure, like I can't wake up and do this again and I was withholding, then that actually is dishonest, Mm. you know? So I think like there's reaction and there's knowing. And I think we all do know when. I don't think we all do. You don't? No, not at all. I think you can get to like, you know, where you can get to, like, I'm really frustrated in my job or I'm really frustrated in, like, I can go back to, like, my first marriage. Like, I'm really frustrated in this, you know? And it's like, oh, my God, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. When I look back, I was like, oh, I, there, was, there were a lot of signposts and things that I didn't see. Okay. You know, and I, and I could say that I was, like, lying. But to in yourself. some ways, that's what I was going to say. Okay. Really, it was almost more to myself or trying to convince myself or, you know, it's like... I'm going to make another sports analogy. If you're down by 20 points in with 10 minutes left to go in the fourth quarter, you know, you can, you have to have this belief, like I can still win this game. Otherwise you give up. The reality is from the outside. And when you might look back afterwards and you still got your butt kicked, you can say, I had no way of winning that game. But if you don't say, I still have a chance, then you might as did, well just say, you know, for the last 10 minutes, we're going to sit out or we're going to forfeit this did game. Did you feel like you had, you still had a chance to the last minute? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, absolutely, you know, and in almost everything that I do, when I do it like but, that, so you that's felt my... like you, you still had a chance, but you still went ahead and filed for divorce. Oh, well then, no, at that point that was, once that was, once that happened, that was over. But up until it was like, up until the moment I really knew for sure, like there's no turning back, but there were many, many moments leading up, up to that. I mean, we were together for 19 years, something like that. So leading up to that, up to that actual moment, like I can look back and say, oh, there were many, many times where it was clearly over, okay. but yet I kept still fighting like, like I was, you know, like I was a, you know, like I was a quarterback in a, in a football game and I was down by an insurmountable amount, but I played as though I still had a chance. Yeah. And then when it's done and when you got a divorce, didn't you feel like I did absolutely everything I could 100%. to save my marriage and it didn't work? A hundred percent. Okay. But that's, a, but that's still different because all the way up through someone, you could easily go back and say, like, you were doubting this for a long time, yet you stayed in it. You were lying. You were lying to yourself or you're lying to your to I your don't wife. think so. I think as long as you're honest about like, I am going to give this a chance, you know, sometimes what... To other people seems like lying to herself is just like hopes and dreams, you know? So even like you give an example of Nelson Mandela, someone could have looked at him and said like, you're totally lying to yourself. Right. Cash in your chips. You're going to die in that prison. Yeah. Yeah. So I think like sometimes we all need to lie to ourselves in order to achieve something. Yes. Right. But then, but then at what point is that lying? And at what point is that like really staying motivated or keeping your eye on the goal, knowing that sometimes you don't get to your goals. And Mm -hmm. that's what, that's my point. Like even when we go back to like this Dave and Rachel Hollis thing, or we go back to this stuff in a relationship, at what point does it become I'm withholding or I'm lying? And at what point is it, you know, I'm so committed that even though I'm down by an insurmountable amount with not enough time left to win this game, I'm still going to show up and fight to the very, very end. I think that I think you just named 
you I think you just named it is just like speaking about it like I am gonna win like I'm I probably have no chance of winning this game but I'm I keep trying and I think what they missed was to tell people like we are almost losing at this game but we we are doing everything that we can to make sure that we win yeah I think that's what they missed uh, I which while I agree with that I also want to say that I fully and 100% believe that at the same time you can actually have a really great marriage that you feel really committed to and you're working really hard for and it feels really good. Hmm. While at the same time, you're like, you know, you can, I feel like there are times, yes, at the same time you feel like I'm winning this game, I'm doing it, I'm coming back and, you know, I don't even need to like address the negative because I know I'm going to win this game. Hmm. While at the same time, you're like, you're just totally getting your butt kicked. And I think those two things can, and I think that's what's so hard for everyone to understand, including my, I don't know if I can cognitively, like I might be able to understand it in my brain and speak it, but is it like in my cells? Is it in my true deep understanding that at the same time I can feel like I'm winning and I'm doing it all while at the same time also feel like I'm totally getting my butt kicked. And then I just like, which one am I going to focus on? I so want to my, my question is better. for like to learn from like that experience is like, are we just going to keep trying? And then like over a period of a month, we're like, we're done. Like a month. Come on. I'm going to give this more than a month, a bad month. <laughs> okay. We have a really good relationship yeah. and we struggle. Do we avoid the struggle and like not talk about it and just show people and our friends, like we have this amazing relationship or like, I want to be able to like, Yes, I have a good relationship. And also at the same time, I don't want to show like it's perfect. Yeah, well, it's definitely not. And I think that's okay. And when I think back, there was a period of time during our podcast while we were recording where we had about three or four episodes in a row where two of them were like, where I felt like there was negativity that was almost like dripping through the microphone. Uh And then a couple of times I'm like, really, every time we're going to show up. And it also happened on podcast day. Where like we just woke up and it was just like, uh, you know, like, oh, is this basically going to become the dysfunctional relationship podcast <laughs> as opposed to the interracial relationship podcast? And I had to wonder that, you know, and I was like, oh, I don't want to like every time someone shows up to be like, Ugh, I don't want to listen to this. These people are Debbie Downers. <laughs> <laughs> and but I, I want to be authentic about it. Like being in an interracial relationship is not so easy. Well, being like, in any being, relationship is yeah, not so easy. But also like the added part about being in an interrelation interracial relationship is not so easy. So I don't want to come here and I pretend like everything is just so rosy. It's not. And the only thing I would say to that is that the rosiness in more places comes when we can actually say, you know what, our challenges are like when we go to the gym. When we go to the gym, Bosco makes us lift weights until we like cannot do one more weight. And it's, and then we like walk home or, you know, and it's like, oh, I'm sore. I wake up the next day and it hurts. But yet we still show up every day for it because we actually appreciate the, the positive impact of the pain of lifting weights that are too heavy. And in that way, I think too, in a relationship, the shift is that whatever we're going through and these challenges, we can either be like, oh, this is really too bad. Or we can be like... Yeah, it's kind of like going and getting our butts kicked at the gym. You know, if we keep doing it, we actually get stronger. And therefore, the benefits of the struggle far, far, far outweigh the fact that we're sore in the morning. Yeah, true. So I think like, I don't know, like my commitment to to our relationship and to like this podcast is to show up authentically um, where I am on that specific day or maybe that specific week. Um, but also like also acknowledging that some things I'm not going to share on the podcast. I need, I'm still processing them. Right. You know? In the same way that if I'm feeling like whatever we're feeling is that sometimes we say, you know what, let me sleep on it <laughs> before to see if it's really true. Or if I'm just having a crappy day and I'm going to say, I feel whatever, or you or my blaming of you is like, maybe it's just me and I need you know, to sleep on it. There was one time I read that book. I think you read it too is like 13 things mentally strong, strong people do not do. Mm-hmm. And one of them was like just reacting and calling friends to talk about everything that's difficult. So I used to have this thing because I drove like a lot. They don't, do, mentally strong people don't do that. Correct. Yeah. So I used to drive a lot. And if I was, something was bothering me, I would just call my friends on the drive and just talk about it. 
you know, or, like or vent. Verbally vomit all over their ear. Correct. Yeah. And I was like, I thought of, after I read that book, I was like, it's really not fair for my friends, you know, that I'm just calling and venting and ruining their day. Just because I'm having a bad day doesn't mean like you should have a bad day. My friends should have a bad day. I was like, why don't I just first sit with what I'm going through? And it's what I've been doing. Like if I'm having a hard day, I don't necessarily call my, my best friend and vent. You know, I sit with it and then if I decide I still need to vent, I call her and I ask. And I think it's even appropriate to ask the other person, do you have, can you, can I vent? You know, like ask for permission yeah. before you start venting on like someone, yeah. because sometimes it's just going to feel like it's just being dumped on you. And so even that, I think it goes to like our listener. Like I don't want to be dumping stuff on our listeners Right. All the time. And I think that's just a nice way to kind of bring that around is that, yeah, is this balance, right, between like what just honesty is just not necessarily so cut and dry is that there's just we're human beings and many things can coexist at the same time within us. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I guess for people like me who follow Rachel Hollis and Dave, it's like. Just, they're human beings. People make mistakes. Like, you don't actually know what's going on. We really don't know what's going on. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And of course, we, you really can't know what's going on if nobody shares it. So, I think we'll, we have a commitment to share while also being respectful of what, you know, what is okay to share between us and our own, you know, where we are at it. But then also being respectful of making sure that we show up with authenticity um, and not putting on some perfect face yeah but i have a really perfect face pretty close to it anyway <laughs> i don't mind looking at it every day <laughs> well anyway thanks for uh joining us for this week's podcast on it's not all black and white my name is sarah i'm black i'm matthew i'm white this is the interracial couple podcast and we'll see you next week see you next week